Welcome to this video tutorial about the software package TestCon 6 Studio. This tutorial will be no step-by-step -step tutorial. I will just give you some basic information about the software and some kind of new devices. In the next videos I will give you step-by-step -step instructions. First of all I will talk about what is TestCon 6 Studio, then which devices can be programmed with TestCon 6, and why do I need the test commander? And how do these tools work together? After that I will give you a short look into the Q station. The Q station is the most complex device um, in the Gander family. Um, to program the Q station you will need to know some information given in this video. And the last point is uh, what is TestCon runtime and I will just answer some basic questions. So what is TestCon Studio? TestCon Studio is a graphical programming system for signal processing of test controllers of the Gainer family. For example you can evaluate input signals or use filter functions to damp input signals. You can basically do everything that you could do with a classic pr signal processing function. Furthermore, there is a large library available. What you can also do with TestCon is a classic automated test process. For that matter, classic logic functions known from PLC programming are available for programming the function block libraries. To generate a totally controlled process, there are PID controllers available. So it is really possible to program a complete automation of test process with TestCon. The test controller is often used to generate a test signal. So signal generators are needed for that matter. If the reaction of the test object has to be measured, a defined input signal can be applied. And this can be realized with TestCon 6 Studio. It became necessary with the QStation 101 DT to program a human machine interface so the display of the queue station can be programmed. Other displays and other systems can be programmed with TestCon 6 Studio too. How does it work to program with TestCon? First of all, there are three programming languages or programming patterns function block diagram, flowchart, and sequence chain. You can see a function block diagram in the upper corner. Classic function blocks are placed on the worksheet and then connected by signal lines. That is how an application is built, one block after another. Especially for programming a batch-oriented process or test process, flowchart programming is used. In our company we often use flowchart programming to create HMI programming or operating programming, as this is often control flow and control flow dominant programming. It is in contrast to signal flow data programming, which is data flow oriented programming. For those who come from the PLC related world, there are sequence chains, which are also a type of programming and it is implemented in TestCon 6 Studio. It is easy to recognize, so more complex processes can be programmed. I would like to shortly show you what I mean, but as I have already said in the beginning, this video should only give you an impression about the surface of TestCon, uh, how it looks like and how TestCon works with Gander devices in general. What you have here is the worksheet with several different tree views from which resources necessary for programming are taken from. Later on in this tutorial I will give you some more detailed information about that. I would like to quickly show you logic programming with logic functions like n, not, or, and xor. You simply drag the blocks into the worksheet and then connect them, so the application is programmed step by step. This also works in the analog section with float. There are many functions which can be used for that. Here you can see the different libraries, which provide many possibilities to create the application. 
how to specifically work with TestGun will be topic of my next tutorials. Now I will quickly show flowchart programming, so you will have a short impression about that. Here you see seconds chain programming, which can also be used in TestCon. Which devices can be programmed with TestCon 6 Studio? Not only the QStation, but also all the devices from the E-Series can be programmed. However, only the old function blocks are available. If there is an update sometime, new function blocks will be available. Classic devices from the current Q-series, which you can program with TestCon 6, are QPack, QGate and the QStation. Derivations like the QRAS and QBricks are also included and can be programmed with TestCon 6 Studio. Up here you can see a more special device. This is the TestCon Runtime. It is a Windows PC which you can program. However, I will talk about it a little later. Here you can see Test Commander and TestCon. How do Test Commander and TestCon work together now? You are not able to configure test controllers like the QStation, EPAC or eGate or others with TestCon. You will additionally need Test Commander. If you already know GANDA devices, you already know the Test Commander and you know how comprehensive the configuration can be. At first I am scanning the target device, which is the QStation here. I read the standard configuration, which the system has scanned itself. It recognizes the connected modules. On basis of the default configuration, I can adapt my own configuration to my needs. For example, I can designate an I.O. as a current channel, or I can designate an input to be a voltage channel, or if I want to work with the uh, 4 to 20 ampere at some point, that is possible to configure with TestCon 2. And you can also assign variable names, etc. You probably know that if you have already worked with Test Commander. When the configuration is done and cycle time is implemented, the configuration has to be downloaded on the queue station. If I now go on the queue station with TestCon, I will not need the test commander anymore. The configuration is read directly from the queue station. On basis of this configuration, I can write the TestCon program. Now there are specific variable names available for the I.O. channels. So for example, uh, I know the exact channel from which temperature is, re is read. And I can say, okay, this module here is the control input or the wolf I can trigger directly in the application. That means that I write a specific application program on the basis of this configuration. This program will then be downloaded on the queue station and it can work autonomously and independently. So the execution order is to first create a configuration in Test Commander and then program the application with TestCon. Here you can see the inner structure of the queue station. Physically, the queue station is only one device, but logically, there are several devices, which you can see here. When scanning the queue station, you will see the following. I will quickly show you. I am scanning our office network now, and it finds a device, which is the queue station, and it also finds the real time kernel and the Linux kernel. Logically, those are two different devices. That was this device that was found, and this is the real-time kernel. What was also found is this device. It is a Linux process and a microkernel process. What wasn't found is the process for the startup but that is hidden for the user and purpose, so they cannot change the programming of the startup. What was also not found are other kernels, as they are not set up on standard controllers. Theoretically, there are several kernels, which means in one queue station there are logically several devices 
and at least or at the moment there are three. The start app, a programmable user kernel within Linux and a real-time kernel which is called directly as real real-time task within a microkernel. What you can see here is the RAS structure. From outside the device seems like a Linux device. However, Linux itself is only one task within the R-time microkernel. And within this kernel our real-time task will be called. We are dealing with measurement systems here, so we have totally different requirements than we know from the normal office world. So that is why there is this task which completely runs outside of Linux. If Linux now crashes completely, it won't matter to the application, even if Linux has to process tons of processes, because it is dealing with the screen or some complex algorithms are being processed. The real-time task will not be interrupted. Here I have the possibility to reach cycle times or refresh rates of up to 10 kHz, which means I will reach a cycle time range of up to 100 microseconds and it will be executed in real time. So we are dealing with a real time operating system. In this cycle range I can also use PID controllers, which can also be performed in real time. It does not matter what Linux does at that moment. Within this microkernel, the whole data acquisition, which means reading and writing the IOs, is running all within the microkernel. Here is a short impression on Tescon runtime. So what exactly is Tescon runtime? In general, it is nothing other than a small Windows program, which is running on a Windows PC. This Windows PC or this Windows program pretends that it is logically a user task within the queue station. That means if I want to program a task on runtime, I log in at the queue station, which is exactly the partner in with which the task on runtime should communicate. So a task on runtime exchanges data with a test controller, which can be, for example, an EPAC or eGate, and it does not necessarily have to be a queue station just exchanges data with a test controller from the company Gantner instrument over Ethernet. For the system to know with which device it should program, I have to log in with the TestCon runtime at the target system or the communication partner during programming. It is the same as if I would program a TestCon runtime, which is a user space kernel within the queue station same way I have to program the Tescon runtime. There's only one advantage or one change. I do not only have the small screen available, I have the screen of the PC and I have all possibilities which are available on the PC. I can use those. From a logical point of view the kernel seems as if it is running down here. However, the kernel does not run down there, it is running on the PC. And there I can also program superimposed automation functions. But what do I need that for? For once, when I implement my real-time operation and other important functions, I can process up here bigger superimposed applications. I can actually put a master computer above which controls the system. There is a big control panel, so I can use the system as visualization extension of the queue station. Or if I use a device like for example QPAC or EPAC, uh, for which I do not have any visualization possibility, I will get one with the Tescon runtime, for example for the QPAC. So that was it for this tutorial. In the next tutorials I will go further into Tescon 6 Studio and I will explain how to create a project and how I can program a real-time application for the queue station or how to program a user space application for the queue station and how you can connect the user space application with the real-time application. For example to get parameters in the real-time application or read values from the real-time application. Thank you for watching and I hope I could be of some help.